Hey everybody, it is your favorite voiceover artist from Ohio, Brian Vaughn VA. Back at it again, ready to narrate what I think is going to be one of my favorite set of stories ever. What are your D&D Darwin Award stories? But before we get into it, one, make sure to leave a comment down below with a story of your choosing that you'd like to tell us about D&D with, you know, relevancy to the video or not. And feel free to do so on our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper as well. We read both the comments and there. But two, I'm going to explain to you really quick what a Darwin Award technically is, according to most of society. One of the international honors awarded to people who supposedly helped to improve the human gene pool by removing themselves from it in a spectacularly stupid manner. With all that said and done, let's get into the Darwin Award D&D stories. I'm the DM of a 5th edition campaign with a homebrew setting. My party comprises of an Aarakocra wizard, a drow bard, and a centaur druid. There's also an NPC human cleric, but she's not very important here. A bit of backstory to set up the scene before we get into the dumb moment. The party had recently lost the wizard, so they had to venture to the temple of a dark goddess to rescue him. His sister, a necromancer in said goddess's service, had kidnapped him and resurrected him to kill him again to satisfy her own personal vengeance. She believed he was responsible for the death of their family and clan, etc. After the other two party members struggled through the temple, they finally managed to retrieve him and used a scroll of resurrection supplied by the cleric, who couldn't enter the temple of another god. They succeeded in bringing him back and fought his necromancer sister. She was defeated and subsequently killed, much to the wizard's sadness when the cleric was unable to resurrect her. After a very short funeral the party held, the party ended up trapped in a mine by a character from the druid's backstory. The mine itself was just a means for them to pass through to the next part of the campaign, fair enough. They explored the mine a little bit, discovering a near vertical shaft that went down about mm, 250 feet. The bard is upset about the previous events and explained a bit of her involvement with the wizard's sister's death. She made a deal with the goddess of the temple, whom gave her a task and helped her kill the wizard's sister in order to get the bard on task. They stand up at the lip of said vertical shaft having this discussion. What happens next, none of the party expected. I want my character to slip and fall into the shaft. <gasps> what? He slips and falls. <laughs> okay. Keep in mind, this wasn't behind the scenes or something I, the DM, had any knowledge of. Also, something we did in this campaign, we had a rule of plot armor. If your character died, the first time they'd get a shot of plot armor and be saved. Due to the previous events with the necromancer, the wizard didn't have any and was injured from the fight which is why they had planned to take a long rest since they were trapped in the mine anyway. I had explained how deep the shaft was, so there was no confusion. Oh, boy. The bard and druid panicked, rushing to try to help him. I allowed him to roll to try and stop himself, but it failed. The party, due to the nature of the shaft, could only move so quickly or risk falling themselves. The wizard ended up taking 20 d6 bludgeoning damage and instantly killed himself. I can just hear it now. You hear <whistles> like a big splat at the end. It's lovely. To make things worse, oh god, it gets worse. The druid ended up giving up her plot armor to him so he wouldn't die. That's not smart. This ended up coming back to haunt the druid later, and I regret allowing them to give up that plot armor. TLDR, the wizard intentionally killed his own character and then was like, uh, whoops, I didn't realize it was that deep. He forgot the depth I told him 10 minutes prior somehow. I don't, I don't understand how he can forget that quickly, but uh, he shouldn't be playing a wizard anymore if his intelligence score is that low. So that would be Zul, our half-ogre barbarian. <laughs> intelligence score of 5, strength score of 25, holy crap. Basically, a walking extrema ratio to be pointed in the general direction we wanted, strong as a mountain, half is smart. Now, one thing to know about the player role-playing Zul. He's been forged in the fire of a thousand LARP, which is live-action role-play sessions, and has no qualms in saying goodbye to a character. Cool. But he will always role-play his character and the corresponding stats to a T, even if it means doing something insanely moronic. 
So we're in this dungeon, right? And some clues seem to point out to the fact that a section of the caves, judging by the very realistic statues and the chicken-like footprints, had become a nest for a murder of cockatrices. Zol scouts ahead. Zol spots the nest of cockatrices and it's chock full of monsters. Zol cannot distinguish between a cockatrice and a chicken. Zol has cravings for chicken tenders. Oh yes, Zol's my kind of man. Zol charges into the nest bellowing, Yes! Tasty chicken! Hopefully with barbecue sauce. We were level 3 with no access to anything that could de-petrify our half-ogre. And when we actually did, the half-ogre's soul was long departed from this world. The only thing we could do to justly honor that poor sod's memory was to put his body in a place where it could be honored properly. Now our topiary garden is enriched by the statue of a hulking man-beast trying to twist the neck of an invisible chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, forget barbecue sauce, he wanted to dip that shit in some cockroaches blood. Now we've been asked many times by the constable of Ford's grave to add a cockroaches sculpture for the context of it. But we feel that Zol would like it better if the depiction of his idiotic demise is a little more metaphoric. The cockroaches is not pictured, just like Zol's idiocy, <laughs> but you can intensely feel both of them as a reminder that when the idiot crosses the road and finds a chicken, sometimes they both end on the other side, flash fried and dead. As a DM, I had two from the same campaign. Ooh, juicy. Neither resulted in death, but they were both sitting at two failed death saves due to their own bad decisions. The first one happened in the very first session. Oh God. The party is all level one and they're making camp in the forest. What could go wrong? They've been hearing wolves howling all night long. Ooh. The druid, knowing there are wolves in the area, decides, I'm going to go outside the camp and grow a ring up, smelly mushrooms around the camp, to keep the animals out. He walks outside the camp, right into the path of two wolves and a dire wolf. He was downed and at two failed death saves almost immediately. Had the second wolf hit its attack, his character would have been dead. The party managed to scramble over and save him before the wolves got a chance to attack again. The second one was a bit later in that campaign. The party was at level 4 at this point. They made it that far? They're going through a cave system when they encounter two driders. If you don't know what a drider is, they are a horrible abomination of a drow combined with a spider, aka a dark elf and a big fucking spider, usually a black widow. My player, who was playing a rogue, had built their character, um, well, wrong for a rogue. And on top of that, they were playing him like a fighter. In his defense, he'd never played anything but a fighter before, so he didn't quite understand how dumb his actions were when he decided not to attack the Drider, who was currently engaged with multiple party members. No, they decided to attack the one that wasn't fighting anybody yet. What in God's good earth? Did I mention this rogue's constitution score was 8 and his total HP was 16? Ugh. Yeah, he was at 2 HP after the first hit, downed on the second, and after two failed saves after the third Drider's attack. To his credit, after that encounter, I talked to him and mentioned that he'd probably live a lot longer if he used his bow, and him and the monk became a nigh-unstoppable combo of death. I can imagine a whirlwind of arrows, blood, and murder. I love it. My boyfriend DM'd a campaign where one of his players, a wizard's apprentice, who had stumbled upon the existence of an ancient catacomb of sorts, decided to go into an underground tunnel that led into an ancient vault. While exploring said tunnel, the DM described the tunnel as dark and somewhat noisy due to the crumbling of sand. Said player declared he'd fumble and beat the door <laughs> to try to open it, then cast light and asked for a reassessment of the situation. The DM described sand falling in several trails along the tunnel. The player declared he'd illuminate the tunnel more. The DM calculated that the tunnel would hold another extra round before collapsing. The player insisted on moving the door and the sand noises quickened. The DM asked him what his action would be and you guessed it, the player cast iridescent light again. 
only to be told the tunnel collapsed on top of him, leaving him an internal light. And, uh, kind of reminds me of that scene from Kill Bill Volume 2 where he now is buried alive with a flashlight, except he's not going to punch his way out of sand. Good luck, buddy. You're gonna need it. This one is my favorite so far. This character did a backflip into a sphere of annihilation while trying to prove he could backflip over it. Hardcore parkour. <laughs> so we're attempting to steal the body of Tiamat from a chitin who freezes his victims and displays them in his fortress as a statue gallery. That is so metal. We find his avatar in his meeting room and quickly discover that he can reflect a magic back at the caster. We defeat the Avatar, continue onwards, and find the real Chitin in the last room guarding our prize. While the rest of us move to grab the frozen dragon and prepare to teleport away with it, our wizard decides to harass the Chitin by casting an ice spell on him. Unfortunately, he completely forgot the Chitin's powers from three rooms ago. The spell reflects, killing the wizard and freezing his body solid. Chitin Jerk says, Ah, oh, a self-making statue. Excellent. <laughs> that's like a that's like a '90s bad guy quote ripped clean out of a movie like Last Action Hero. Ten out of ten. You see a whirlpool in the sewers. It's quite violent and seems deep. I jump in. Do you know how to swim? Uh, no. That was the third action of the first session. Not even ten minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> Had a player choke to death while trying to swallow a chicken while it was still alive. What? The chicken became the party's mascot. Good for you. I wasn't the DM, but a player. But basically, this dude was a gnome. And he had been thrown recently, as gnomes typically do. However, because of how he was actually thrown, this man had very low HP from fall damage. The party went into a tavern, and this guy immediately tries to steal from someone, gets caught, gets into a bar fight, and promptly gets his teeth kicked in. This was at the beginning of the game, and this motherfucker ain't gonna be eating corn on the cob with no fucking teeth. During a campaign I played, we spent the night in an inn, located on top of a hill, with bedrooms that were on the second floor. And we were attacked during the night, so naturally, a huge fight started. Dun dun dun! One of the PCs was in a real bad position because he rented a room for himself, so he basically had to fight alone. Rather than, oh, I don't know, disengaging and running away against a group of orcs, he decided to flee by jumping out of the window from the second floor from an inn on top of a hill. So yeah, he's, uh, he's dead now. From the current campaign I'm in, we were in our barbarian's hometown that was under a siege by vampires. We had to take over the windmill to get food for the resistance who fought against the vampires. After we were successful, our barbarian left. The DM planned a dramatic scene by letting the vampire lords show up and threaten her with her mother, whom they held captive. Instead of talking, the barbarian immediately attacks them. She was alone. She left us after the windmill to tell the resistance about the successful takeover. And guess what? She died. She died even after we all begged her to run to us. Well, I mean, I can kind of understand in character her being like, yes, my mother, I'll kill you all. But uh, even Conan the Barbarian had enough brains to have backup at that point. So chalk that one up to a Darwin Award. Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here. Hope you had a lot of fun with this as I did because not everybody's going to have a heroic death. Sometimes it's going to be very, very silly and stupid. That being said, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to ring that bell, and to post a story of your very own or one that you've heard here say down in the comments below or on our subreddit r slash Mr. Ripper. We do check both. Go right ahead and fire them off. If you want to come say hi to me, you can find all my socials linked in my website, brianvonva.com. As always, I try to end things on a positive note. And I just want to say, I just want to say, flat out, I think every session of D&D should have a little bit of comedy to it. Yeah, your character may die in a very stupid or silly way, but it's never anybody bullying you when we laugh at it. We're laughing at it because D&D, or any TTRPG, 
is an unpredictable, chaotic fucking nightmare. And that is the beauty of it. We love reading about it. I love reading about it in general. And I love seeing, like, the, just a, a rookie character running into danger, not, like, you know, acknowledging the DM at all, and then they die. And it's like, oh, shit. And then they learn something from it. Sometimes they get a little mad, but they, that's why you calm them down and say, hey, look, no, 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 wait. Roll another character. We'll make sure everything's fine. But don't do that again. And they're like, well, what happens? Like, well, we tried to help you. We tried to warn you, and you died. But you died so epically in a silly way that we're going to remember this story for thousands of years to come, which is something really cool. So don't be afraid to, to roleplay your character dying in a silly, stupid way as long as you're still in character. Obviously, don't ignore the DM and your party, but my, my point is it's never a bad thing to have these silly, goofy moments, okay? It's just something that you can laugh at, and you might even make a legend of that character later because of how goofy they were. It's like, oh, I want money, and then you run at some dude who's carrying a coin purse. He turns around, clocks you in the face, and you fall over, and you bump your head and die. It's like, this man was the worst thief of all time, and they have, like, a book written on him, you know? It, it's a funny, cute little moment, and you should laugh at it because, hey, it's just the game. All the love, please be safe, be happy, and stay living your life with that beautiful imagination, because that is what really matters. Smile, be happy, we'll see you later.